Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if overpowered Naruto x Fu x Samui x Yujido, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. Run Naruto. Kuruma yelled, as his best friend and host was being chased by a mob. It was his 6th birthday, and every year this happens. Kuruma was loyal to Uzumaki's, they never sought out power, and were so peaceful. His host, Naruto, was the last of his clan, and Kuruma would do anything to protect him. Hit, I'm going to send some chakra through you, run out the gate, they won't chase you there. Hi, Kuruma. Naruto replied, and took off with enhanced speed, thanks to the fox's chakra. Soon Naruto made it to the outer gate of the village, and leapt over it. After that, he ran to a tree, and jumped into it. The villagers were still behind the gate, and started to cheer that the village was safe from the demon. Naruto relaxes on a branch. Thank you Kuruma. They nodded. No problem, but I think you should leave the village. It's not safe here. But where should I go? And what about Jiji, Aim Chan, and Mr. Ramen Guy? Naruto asked. He loved those three, they cared for him the most, and he didn't want to separate from them. What about Hibi Chan? Garuma felt sad for his host, but he knew Naruto wouldn't grow here. Humans can hold a grudge, and he didn't want Naruto to become a hateful person like the Achihas because of the village. The life of a wait, that's it. Kit, how would you like to make a lot of friends? My siblings are spread across the nation. One of them is where you should go. But what about food? Kit, you are going to be a shinobi in the future. I'll teach you how to hunt, some chakra exercises, how to fight, and a certain clone known by someone I once knew. Kuruma offered. A week and a half passed since Naruto left, he was standing at the side of the biggest tree he had ever seen in his life, and a waterfall to match the size. Naruto learned the shadow clone jutsu, but when he first used it, he produced 60 clones and suffered from chakra exhaustion, so Kuruma had to refill his reserves. Naruto was close to mastering tree climbing, and he started hunting rabbits and squirrels. Kuruma also noticed when Naruto was hunting animals, he was sensing chakra around him and also life force. Kuruma knew how some Uzumaki sensing ability and other possible bloodlines and abilities Naruto could possibly have in the future. The boy will surpass his ancestors, Kuruma will guarantee it. Halt. Naruto turned a guard who came from behind a waterfall. Kit, tell them your parents were killed by an inn and you're an orphan. If they ask what village, say you're from the wave. The kid? What are you doing here and where's your parents? The guard asked. Naruto looked down in sadness and started to cry. I don't have any parents, they died. The Taki guard's heart broke. I had nowhere to go, we were headed to, but we were attacked by a masked man and my parents told me to run. So I ended up here. The guard bent down and put a hand on his shoulder, causing Naruto to flinch. Please don't kill me. Naruto mumbled. I'm not going to kill you. Come with me and welcome to Taki. The guard instructed. Naruto nodded and followed. They went through the waterfall and Naruto was amazed. The guard chuckled. What's your name kid? I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto answered. Taki. I thought we were heading to Kumo. I think I made a wrong turn when we left the wave. Kuruma said. Well Naruto-san, I hope you like our village, but if you see a girl with mint-colored hair, try to stay away from her. She's dangerous. Kurama's eyes, what it sounded like, the guard talked, it sounded like how the adults talked about Naruto. Hit, ask him where the girl will stay, to avoid her. Kurama ordered. Um, is there a certain area I should stay away from to avoid her? Naruto asked. Well, since she was kicked out of the orphanage, she stays under the trunk of our center's huge tree. There's also a lake there. The guard answered. Naruto nodded. Hit, this girl might be like you. If she's treated the same, my friend could be sealed inside. Kuruma asked. The guard led them to Shibuki, the leader of Taki, mansion. Shibuki-sama. The guard called knocking on the door. Come in. The guard led Naruto to Shibiki quarters, who was sitting behind a desk. There was a girl with mint hair standing next to him. The guard looked at the girl and scolded a bit and Naruto recognized the look all too well. He looked up at his guard and saw Naruto. Who's this young man? The guard turned to his leader and bowed. Hi, this is an orphan. His name is Naruto Uzumaki and his parents were killed by a man in a mask. I found him outside our village. Shibuki nodded and waved off the guard to leave. Hello, young man. How did you end up here? My name is Shibuki. Hi there, my name is Naruto, and Naruto gave the same story he gave the guards causing Shibuki to frown. I'm sorry to hear that, you can stay here as long as you want. Shibuki said, but noticed his attention was on Fu. Shibuki smiled. Naruto-san, this is Fu. Naruto approached the girl and stuck out his hand. Hi, want to be friends. Fu opened her eyes in surprise, then slowly looked down. You don't want to be my friend, everyone thinks I'm a monster. But I don't care what everyone says. Fu snapped her head at Naruto. 
I have no friends either, and I think you are a regular girl who could use one. Are oh, really? You'll be my friend. Fu asked hopefully. Better, we'll be best friends. Naruto said with a foxy smile. Fu's smile grew wide and shook Naruto's hand. Hmm. She responded, but as soon as they touched, they were standing on water with a green surrounding. Where are we? Naruto looked behind Fu and saw a cage. You were right Kuruma. Fu tilted her head until she noticed the cage behind her new friends. A red slit eye was seen behind the cage. I see, good for you Naruto. I couldn't sense it behind the cage, but I'm glad you found a friend. Fu turned to Naruto with a shocked expression. You're the same as me? I guess so. Naruto responded, rubbing the back of his head. Wow, Kuruma. What are you doing here outside your domain? Naruto looked through the cage behind Fu and heard a buzzing. Naruto was squinting his eyes and saw a beetle. The Mei-chan, who is this? Fu asked. This is my friend. The. Kuruma, you didn't answer my question. Not that I'm happy to see you. Listen up, I hate to tell you this, but we were trying to go. I'm still glad to see you, I gave the kid the wrong directions. Kuruma said. Fu looked at Naruto, and he nodded. Why are you trying to go to Kumo? Chimei asked. Well, in the village the kid came from, he was treated like a plague. He was kicked out of the orphanage and was always attacked, no one would sell him food, and he was ignored. Kuruma explained. Chimei looked at her host and thought about Fu. The same thing happened to her more or less. During the last war Kashina and Minato encountered Akumo, and from what I learned from his comrades, they treated him like a hero. They were calling him Lord B. I was thinking the kid could go there and make friends. Can I go? I want to make more friends. Fu suddenly asked. It won't be easy, I don't think Shibuki will let you. Regardless of how much of a coward he is. Chimei said. Um, I think we can use that. Kuruma said with a mischievous smirk. Naruto noticed and got excited. Are we going to play a prank? Naruto asked. Yes, and a great one. Outer world. Chibuki was looking at the two with a confused expression. They were quiet and staring at each other. Are you okay? Huh? Naruto and Fu responded by looking around. Nai-san, I have something to tell you. What is Naruto? You see, me and Fu are the same. And, as we get older, the inside of us will slowly take over, unless we learn how to use their power. Shibuki started to panic. Kuruma smirked at the reaction. I actually made a wrong turn, I was trying to go to Kumo. I think Fu should come with me. Shibuki looked at Fu. What do you want, Fu? Honestly I think you should go. You're treated wrong here, and to be honest I'm sick of it. I never had the courage to do anything about it. It's okay, you tried your best. You were the only one who was nice to me, but I think I should go. Fu said with a smile. Shibuki nodded, but frowned. But how do we get you there? Naruto raised his hand and suggested what Kuruma told him to do. Then, the Rakage was sitting at his desk finishing the paperwork after the damage Yugao, the two tails, caused. They sealed it into her, and it took a while to control. Rakage Zama. Shouted. Running in the room. What is it? I asked. We have a message from Taki to form an alliance. Really, what could they offer? Unless it's the hero's water, I don't care, not that we need it. I responded. It's better. They're offering the Jinchurikis of the land that Chunin informed. A head shot up at the shock. Really, we will possess four, we'll be the strongest in the nation. Call B, Mabui, and Derry. We accept their proposal. To think we'll have two more Jinchurikis. A week later B arrived with Mabui and Derry. B led the group to Shibuki Mansion where he was waiting with the two kids. B smiled and approached the three. Yo, it's nice to meet you, you can call me the master of rap, Killer B. You have to be with a groove and understand my rhyme, I'm 8, are you on board Miss 7, and, who tilted her head. You're weird. Naruto laughed. That was great, it's nice to meet you MR. 8. Barry smiled. The kid raps better than you, B-sama. M-A-B-U-I dot looked at Naruto and smirked. He's a cutie. So did you bring the agreement scroll? B nodded and handed the Taki leader a scroll. He nodded and gave B a scroll, confusing the. These are jutsus for Fu, they're water jutsus for when she becomes a shinobi. Naruto can learn from them as well. Cool, I guess we'll hit the road. 7, 9, it's time to go. The two kids nod and both ran to Shibuki and gave him a hug. Shibuki smiled and returned. Goodbye you two, become very strong, and remember, you are not just. You're Fu and Naruto. Thanks for having me, Nai-san. Naruto said. Thanks for looking after me, Ani-chan. Fu said, both kids backing away. The group spoon left. Naruto was on baby's back and Fu on dairies as they leapt through the trees. So, Naruto-kun. My name is Mabui of the Thunder Step. Do you have a last name? Naruto blushed at the suffix. Yeah, Naruto Uzumaki. Mabui's eyes widened. You're from the Uzumaki clan. That's awesome, I heard about them. 
They were super strong and knew a lot about seals. Well, I'm not sure. Yes you are, I'll tell you about them later. Your mother's name is Kashina Uzumaki. Well, they say I'm from the Uzumaki clan and my mother was Kashina Uzumaki. I've heard of her, she was beautiful as she was dangerous. She decimated over 300 ninjas for threatening her home. I wish I could have seen her. Mabui said in awe. Watching her fight was out of sight even though I'm the best. She still put me to a test. It was luck that I survived, they kept me alive. B said. I have to admit, Uzumaki-san. Your mother was amazing, she wielded a sword with such grace, her mastery over water, and was powerful. She was a SS rank shinobi. Derry said. Naruto smiled. I wish I met her even once. I'm an orphan, but it's good to hear stories. Naruto said quietly. Mabui nodded as they headed to. Hiruzen was looking through his crystal ball for his surrogate grandson. It's been a few weeks since he last saw the blonde and he was worried. Where are you Naruto-kun? Please be alright. Inu, Weasel, and Cat appeared in front of the leader kneeling. Haki-sama, I have some info. Cat said. Report. Hiruzen ordered. Hi, it seems Naruto was kicked out of the orphanage three months ago and was living on the street. Hiruzen seethed. I was giving the money to take care of Naruto-kun and he hasn't been there. Anything else? Hi, it seems like he might not be in the village. I sent my dogs to track him and they smelled his scent outside the gate. I assume he was chased out of the village. Inu said in anger. He felt like he had failed his sensei's son. He wasn't in the village and because of that, Naruto was gone. Here is inside and stood up. It's time the village knows what they did and who they did it to. I kept his heritage a secret and the village believed Minato transformed into the fox Naruto. If I had informed them earlier, things might have been different. I'm going to make the announcement, gather the villagers in front of the tower. After half an hour, the villagers gathered in front of the tower wondering what was going on, while well, some had a suspicion. Here is an on top of the tower with a grim expression. He gathered his wits before speaking. Hello Konoha, I hid a secret from you about Naruto Uzumaki and now I regret to inform you he is gone. I'm not sure if he's alive or not, but it doesn't matter now that he's not here now because of how this village treated him, he might not come back. Now some of you might be thinking, no one cares about the demon, and we're safe, but what you've done was committed an act worse than treason. I hid the identity of his parents and heritage from you thinking I would protect him from his parents' enemies until he was strong enough to defend himself, but I failed. Have any of you wondered where a boy appeared out of nowhere to be sealed and why Minato chose him? And just in case you think Minato transformed into a boy, you're wrong. There's no one that can force a transformation on another. Then where did he come from? A civilian asked. You see, only a very few people knew this, but Naruto was not the first in the Leaf Village, in fact he was the third. This has been in our village for over a hundred years. The first was Mito Uzumaki Senju, the second was Kashina Uzumaki Namikas. You see, the Uzumaki Chakra consists of Yin Chakra that can neutralize any form of chakra it touches, that's why Uzumakis are the only ones who could handle the massive chakra. Now you may be wondering, how did it escape? Well, you see, a female seal weakens only one pacific time. When she gave birth, to make sure they wouldn't escape, Minato made sure the seal was stable when Kashina gave birth, but something unfortunate happened. Someone found out about the secret and attacked Kashina and used her son as a hostage to get to her, ripping them out of her and taking control of it. The civilian gasped. What happened next? Tsum asked. She was best friends with Kashina and she was desperate to know what happened to her son, Tsum God's son. The intruder infiltrated the village and summoned the within, so in retrospect, he wasn't at fault for the attack either. Minato fought him, but, as strong as he was, there was no way he could beat A, our immortal, and the only way was to seal it away, that's where Naruto came in, him being a Uzumaki was the only way to save the village, so Minato sealed him away in the boy, even though he didn't know about Uzumaki's being the only ones to handle the burden. This caught everyone's attention. If he didn't know, why did he seal it in Naruto? A civilian asked. The civilians wonder the same thing. Well, what kind of person would he be if he used somebody else's son, but his own hearers and said. Everyone's eyes widened and gasped. Some started to shout lies while others looked down in guilt. I know some of you don't believe me, but think about a couple things. 1. Why would I lie about it now that he's gone? 2. Why did Naruto have blonde hair and blue eyes like Minato? 3. Why would he just hypnotize the shinobi and not the civilians if he was the, after all, with his chakra, he could have killed everyone? 4. Why did he never respond to violence when attacked? If we were hypnotized, why didn't he command the shinobi to kill you civilians every time you attacked him? 5. Why did he cry, why did he want friends? For six years he was here and we're still alive. And if you still don't believe me Hiruzen took out some documents and spread them across the village. 
There were multiple copies of Naruto's birth certificate and pictures of Minato and Kishina pregnant, holding a peace sign. This is her handwriting. Everyone turned their attention to Tsum. It even confirms that me and Mabuki is his godmother. He was their pup the whole time, I could have done sob something. Why didn't you tell us? Tsum said, breaking down in tears. Everyone was shocked, no one ever saw Tsum, the toughest woman in Kanoha cry. I'm sorry Kishina-chan. Tsum repeated, kneeling on the ground. Here is in turn towards the village. I kept Naruto's heritage a secret to prevent Iwa Akumo getting to him. Iwa holds a grudge towards Minato because of what he did to them in the last war, and Kumo attempted to kidnap Kishina to breed when she was a child. That's why I couldn't risk it, and it was my mistake, but not my only one. I shouldn't have released the boy status, as A, and I shouldn't have been naive to trust the village. Because of your fear, there's a good chance he was taken by one of the other villages, Minato wanted his son to be seen as a hero and have a normal childhood. He never asks to be spoiled or anything. But your hatred and grudge blinded you. But we lost family that night, we were upset. A civilian said. I understand, but so have I. My wife died giving birth to Naruto, Tsum chan lost some clan members, and the worst of it, Naruto-kun lost his parents that night. His father sacrificed his life for the village, and all he wanted was his son to be loved. Naruto had it worse than anyone in the village, what would Minato think if he was to find out about this, but he can't die. Minato's soul is trapped by the Grim Reaper for the price of using his power to seal the fox. You may believe what you want, but that's the truth. You should also thank Naruto, if he gave into his negative thoughts or committed suicide, the fox would have escaped. We should look for him. A civilian yelled, more started to agree. Hiruzen was happy they realized their mistakes, but he didn't think it would work. Then what? What if he doesn't want to come back? Remember, you overcharged him on everything, sold him rotten food, beaten him, kicked him out of places, and attempted to kill him. He probably fears you, as you feared him, what if he found a new home and doesn't want to come back? Hiruzen said in a cold tone. We can try. Hiruzen turned to Tsum. I'll do anything to find the pup, I never attacked him, but I admit I never helped him, but I'll do everything in my power to find him and make it right. The crowd agreed. Hiruzen shook his head. I'll do everything in my power to find him, but I can't do this alone. If he comes back, things will change. Agree? Hiruzen asked, hi. The crowd said. Hiruzen gave a soft smile then frowned. Naruto-kun, I hope you're alright. Oh my Kami, Anko was right. And worst of all, Naruto was Sensei's son. A mister said. She remembered what she said to the blonde and was starting to feel guilty. B and his group arrived in front of the Rakage's door, B knocked on the door, and they went in. Naruto and Fu saw A looking at them. Fu was nervous, but Naruto was in awe. A man probably, as strong as his Jiji was in front of him. Wow, you look strong, Oji-san. Everyone was god smacked that the blonde called their leader uncle, while Fu was giggling. A smirked. Haha, I like you already kid. I can tell just by looking at you that you're the son of my most respected rival. So why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Naruto Uzumaki, the strongest ninja ever. Naruto said. I respected the intro, already set a goal for himself. I'm Fu, I don't have a surname, but I'm going to be the strongest Kanoichi ever. Fu said. Interesting, why do you want to be strong? I asked. To protect my friends and my new home. Fu and Naruto said together. I nodded in approval and noticed Mabui. 14, and is the Rekage's daughter. Staring at Naruto in awe. Funny, she never showed interest in a guy. This might be special. Plus he's an Uzumaki. I can send him B and Fu to the island to train until they are old enough to join the academy. Uzumakis are great in, Futen and. B I want you to take Fu and Naruto on the special island and train them. They should be ready when the academy starts. An order. Bro, what about Yugi she's fine, she conquered her hatred and she has Samui, I believe in her. You're training too, you'll have a hard time, as it is. B nodded. Good, help these two, just make them physically stronger and conquer their hatred. They're not ready to face their Bijuu, but it should make it easier for them to use their chakra. I got it bro, you can count on me killer B. A sigh, his brother raps were annoying. Just go. B nodded and took the kids with him. After a few days of travel, B made it to the Jinchuriki temple. B turned to his students and smiled. Alright listen up yo, we're going to build your muscle, so you two will hustle, and the training will make you feel pain, but you will have a lot to gain. Nothing can go wrong, cause you'll be strong. Just follow me, the almighty killer B. What? Fu asked. Basically, he said listen to him, and he'll make us stronger. Naruto said. He smiled at Naruto. Yo, got my rhymes, but now we are out of time. Time to train, no pain no gain. Please stop raping. Fu begged. He giggled and nodded. Fine, for our training. 
we are going to be doing training exercises like standard workouts, chakra control practices, and finding a tajutsu style for you too. Also you learn of your affinity. I'm going to strengthen your body and mind, you'll need to be strong to use your partner's chakra. We have two years, so let's get to work. Enko just arrived from her month-long vacation. She never had a break from interrogation and completing missions, trying to get promoted. She wasn't looking forward to heading back to, but mostly seeing her friends, Hana, Yugao, and her special friend Naruto. She had rescued the blonde from a mob, and they naturally bonded, being outcast and all. She had to apologize to him for not seeing him in a month. He was already afraid of people, and she was worried he might be more reserved. She decided to create an entrance. Hiruzen was reading his book, giggling like a schoolgirl when something burst through the window. He sighs, Anko was due back today, and he had a feeling this was her. He looked up and saw Anko landed in front of him with a big smile. Anko Midarashi, returning from a vacation. Welcome back, can you stop breaking the windows? Hiruzen asked. Nope, it makes my entrances better. Can I be reinstated, I need to go. I owe a blonde fox some ramen for being gone too long. Anko asked. Hiruzen paled. He forgot, Anko wasn't here for the announcement. Anko, there is something you need to know about how Naruto Hiruzen started gaining the snake user's attention. Outside the tower, everyone was minding their own business when they suddenly felt thunderous killer intent out of nowhere coming from the tower. What? He's been gone for almost a month and no one found him. Anko seethed. Hiruzen was sweating a bit. Anko Ki was higher than his own and he knew what this woman was capable of when she was pissed. Damn this village. Anko turned around and was about to storm out of the room. Anko, where are you going? Hiruzen asked. I'm going to find him. Naruto-kun is a survivor and I know he's alive. He's alone, we're alone, I won't abandon him. Anko said without turning around. What about your friends? Yuga-san, Hana-san, and Kur Hiruzen paused when Anko Kai flared. Anko calmed down and breathed. Kur and I and I aren't friends at the moment. Anko said in a quiet tone. When I saved Naruto from a mob, I took him to a dango shop for food. You should have seen him eat, he hasn't eaten in days apparently. When Yugao and Kurunai walked in, Yugao greeted Naruto-kun like a normal person, but Kurunai flashed back, slow down Foxy-kun, don't go choking. Anko said to Naruto. I am sorry, no one would give me any food. Thank you for being nice to me. Naruto said. Anko giggled and patted Naruto's head. No problem, what are friends for? Anko replied. Friends? We're friends. Naruto asked, looking hopefully. Sure, I can use a friend, as funny, as you. You're stuck with me. Anko said. Naruto stared at the snake user and glumped her in a hug. Anko gave a rare warm smile and returned the hug. Naruto pulled away and returned to eat. Well hello Anko-chan. Anko turned to the source of the voice and saw Yugao standing there smiling. And who's the cutie? Yugao knew who he was from her Anbu job, but she acted the part. Anko smiled and hugged Naruto, rubbing their cheeks together. This adorable fox is Naruto-kun. He's my new friend. Yugao nodded and sat next to Naruto. He flinched a bit until she ruffled his hair. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. You know I wouldn't mind being friends with a cutie like you. Really? Yay, I have more friends. Naruto cheered. Butts with all the Kurunai asked to walk into the stand, but paused when her eye landed on Naruto, soon her mind started picturing the stepping on her father. She glared at the blonde, causing him to flinch. What are you doing here? Leave. Anko gave Kurunai a confused look. Kurunai, stay quiet. You boy leave, this place isn't for the likes of you. And you try to take advantage of my friends. If you don't leave now. Kurunai threatened. Naruto didn't give her a chance to finish and ran crying. Kurunai sighed and turned to her friends. Sorry about that. Anko, you should be careful she didn't get to finish when Anko grabbed her by the throat. What was that? How can you treat a kid like that and easily dismiss it? Anko said glaring at the mistress. Kurunai returned the glare. How could you endanger us by hanging around him? It's not like I attacked him. I just told him to stay away from you for your own safety. Safety or your own fear. The kid is five years old, do you know what that means? Anko asked, Kurunai shook her head. Anko tossed her to the ground. Five years without no one dying, five years without any sort of destruction or any massacre. You think he would want revenge for all the attacks. He can't do anything because the Yandane weakens him. Kurunai retorted. Really? So you know what technique the Yandane used? Tell me, what's it called, and how does it work? Anko asked. Kurunai was quiet, honestly, she still thought the boy was the fox reincarnate spirit. The fact it disappeared and the blonde appeared out of nowhere made sense to her. Let me guess, you think the fox turned to the boy? Kurunai was snapped out of her thoughts and turned to Anko. Why boy? Why not an adult or another demon form? 
Why stay in that form for five years receiving torture and not transform? I don't know why. Kurin I answered honestly. Exactly, you just believe what everyone tells you, even though 90% of the people here are dumbasses who know nothing of the shinobi arts. You let your emotions take control of you and justified hurting a kid as justice because of your misguided belief. I'm disappointed in you Yuhi-san. When Kurin I heard Anko call her that, her heart broke. I'm going to find them and protect them. If you try to hurt him, you'll end up in the hospital. This is your only warning. Flashback end, Hiruzen looked down in guilt. It's my fault, if I hadn't told everyone Naruto's secret, he would've been here, everything would've. It's not your fault Hiruzen looked at Anko. You could've done things different, but the way the villagers act isn't something you could control. You can only try to do things better, Naruto-kun is alive. I know he is, and we'll see him again one day. Hopefully soon. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to get some dangos, and sake. Hein, you're dismissed, Anko. Thank you. Anko gave them a nod and proceeded to her favorite place. Kurinai wasn't feeling well, ever since the realization of the blonde, Kurinai was feeling foolish. She prides herself on being a great Kanoichi, smart, strong, and looking underneath. She let her fear and hatred take over, treating a kid like a monster when he just wanted a companion. She walked in the dango stand and saw Anko at a table eating some dangos. Here goes Anko-chan. Anko looked up and saw Kurinai. I don't have time for this, Anko mumbled. Anko-chan, how have you been? Kurinai greeted me nervously. Hein, I just learned that the only person who understood me left the village because idiots like you. Anko sneered. Kurinai flinched at the tone and looked down in shame. About that, listen I was wrong. I was angry about my father's death and took it out on an innocent kid. I let my anger take control of me and I wanted to say I'm sorry. Anko was staring at her friend then sighing. I want to forgive you, but I'm not. Because of you and many others, Naruto-kun is gone. I don't know if he's alright. The only way I'll forgive you is if I find him alive and well. Kurinai looked down in shame. I understand, I'm here for you. Kurinai said, but Anko responded by downing another shot. Naruto, I promise I'll find you for Anko's sake. Kurinai thought. She was determined to find the blonde and make things right. Alright listen up, since we three are. We got more chakra than most, so while we train I'll be your host. We will work on our chakra until our control is fine, understand Miss Seven and Mr. Nine. He said. He brought the two kids to the temple and forest. What? Fu asked confusingly. I'm going to teach you how to control your chakra. Then you and you come up with a tajutsu style. I'm going to train you in shuriken throwing, a few low-level ninjutsu and stamina exercises as using your chakra will exhaust you. Once the basics are done, I'll teach you to wield a weapon or two since every kumonin uses one. Do you understand? Hai sensei. Both Fu and Naruto responded. Knock knock come in. I said. When the three Jinchurikas walked in. I smiled and leaned back in his chair. So, how was four years on the island? It was fun Oji-san. I wish we could have stayed there longer. We could have got so much stronger. Naruto said. A chuckle. True, but the academy starts in a few hours and I thought it would be good for you to make some friends. Plus it would have been unfair for Yujito if you train even more than she did. The on why reason I allowed was because you are stronger. I thought to himself. Really? I can make more friends Naruto-kun, we have to go. Fu said excitedly. Fine, let's go. It could be fun. Naruto said. Before that, Naruto. I want to tell you something. Do you have any idea who your father is? I asked. Naruto gave a small smile. Hi, I know. Kuruma told me. Well, good. I would be honored if you use both your parents' names. I respect both of them and I feel it would be right if you would use them. I said. Naruto nodded. Yay, I would love to. I nodded in approval. Good to hear, B. Take them to get some supplies and then to the academy. Can't have our new students be late. You got it bro, come on you too. Let's get this show on the road. B said, leading his two Jinchuriki out. Alright class. We have two new students joining us. I, the Kumo instructor said to her class. Please welcome Fu and. I gasps in surprise when she reads the next name. Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. The class started to whisper when they eyed the blonde. He's kind of cute. Wonder if he's dating that mint hair girl. Isn't the name of the yellow flash. Most of the girls said. Samui eyed Naruto. She had a thing for strong men, but a name doesn't make anyone strong. Hopefully he's not a joke like these other boys. Samui thought before turning to her friend. What do you think, Yujito? Potential new friends. I don't care. We're not here to make friends. But if they are strong, I'll have to test them. Yujito said. You won't have to worry about friends with that attitude. We're people too, Yujito. Don't isolate yourself. Yujito gave her friend a look of disbelief. You're the only one who thinks that. 
Everyone else sees me as a freak, a monster or a nuisance. Yujito said coldly. Samui shook her head and faced forward. Naruto and Fu walk up to the row the two blondes were on and see two extra seats. Excuse, would it be cool if we sat here? Naruto asked. All the girls ah. Which confused the two. He's going to sit next to the freak and ice princess. They're going to hurt him. Naruto-kun, don't. The girl with the ponytail is dangerous. I would listen to them. Naruto and Fu turned to Yujito, who was glaring at them. You don't want to sit next to me or you won't have any friends. Samui frowned and turned to the new students. Don't listen, it'll be cool if you sit here. Just don't bother us during class or interfere with our studies and you'll be fine. My name is Samui by the way. Samui said and elbowed Yujito. Yujito narrowed her eyes at Samui, but it was returned. The two stared at each other for a while, but Yujito gave in. Yujito, there. Hi, I'm Fu. I want to be friends. No. Yujito responded. Fu looks like someone crushed her soul. Naruto saw this and gritted his teeth. What's your deal, she just wants to be friends. Naruto asks. Yujito shifted her eyes towards Naruto. We're not here to make friends. We are here to be ninjas for our village. If she wants friends, go somewhere else. Hidden, you need to open up. Make some friends. I'm sorry for what I did, but don't do this. Neither of us are weapons. We have emotion and don't bottle yours up. Matatabi said. Stay out of it, it's better this way. No one will get hurt. Besides, those two will run away once they learn about you. Yujito responded with sadness. We'll be your friends. Naruto turned to the front of his desk and Amoy was holding out two lollipops. Name's Amoy, here. A sucker for you and your friend. The white-haired boy said. Fu took hers quicker than Naruto. Perry, my name. The redeed said, offering a fist bump. Fu followed through with the fist bump. Don't worry about these two, me and Amoy tried talking to these two, but Samui won't be friends with anyone unless Yujito does, and Yujito had denied us. Speak for yourself. Samui said. It's true, because you're the best Kanoichi doesn't mean you can boss me around. Kerry retorted. Naruto's eyes widened. She's the best. Naruto asked. She's the best overall. Nobody, boy or girl, ever beat her in a fight. Yujito is not far behind. Amoy explained. Samui looked at Naruto and Fu to analyze their reaction. Most people get scared to fight her once they hear this. Naruto smirked. Sweet, I can't wait to fight you now. Naruto said with a predator grin. Samui was shocked and smiled a little. Wow, you're strong, but you can't beat Naruto-kun. He's definitely stronger. Fu said with confidence. Samui turned to Naruto, hardening her gaze. Really? We'll have to see. Yujito looked at the two, she wouldn't openly admit it, but she wanted to be friends with the two, but she didn't want to be betrayed again. It's been four months since Naruto joined the academy. To the surprise of everyone, except Fu. Naruto and Samui were equal in terms of skills and knowledge, in fact they were the only students to have a perfect score in everything, but Jinjutsu. Samui believed Genjutus was cowardly, and Naruto didn't have enough control to perform them. Samui had Naruto beat in Kenjutsu, but speed and Tijutsu, Naruto was superior. They form a rivalry, but Samui still refused friendship until Yujito accepted it, to Naruto irritation. Naruto and Yujito were always at each other's throats. When he asked Fu why she didn't give up on her. Fu responded with, everyone deserves a friend or two. Fu also said there was something about her that drew her in. Naruto felt it too, but he was just too stubborn to acknowledge it. Naruto became best friends with Amoy, well second to Fu, and they had some rivalries. Naruto only used borrowed sword sense, he didn't have a sword he was comfortable with. Fu was best friends with Kerry, well Kerry was always hot-headed, when it came to Fu, she was calm and cheerful. Kerry thought Fu was an adorable sister. Ijido was pretty much the same towards the other two. She felt a pull from the others. She didn't know what it was. A familiar feeling, but she always ignored it. She was impressed by how strong the two were. She assumed they would be a joke with cheerful demeanor, but she was tight in strength with Fu. The weird thing was that Fu's personality changed when she fought, just like Naruto's. They become focused and determined, even when Fu loses to her. She goes back to her cheerful nature, and the sad part was that Fu's cheerfulness was drawing her in more. Naruto had made some fangirls, and Fu, alongside Samui, made some male worshippers, Fu being innocent and needed to be protected. Samui being badass and hot, drawing in some soon-to-be perverts. As of the moment, the class was going to have another Tajutsu match. Alright. Now Fu vs. Yujito. To the ring. Both Jinchurikas made it to their respective sides. Good luck Yugi-chan. Fu said. Don't call me that. Yujito said. Some kids were mumbling about the freak being rude. Naruto knew Yujito was being rude and she was strong, but these kids were calling her a freak, in fact they had been doing it for months, but it didn't bother her at all. What was the reason? 
the only conclusion was that she was a. He asked Kuruma, and the fox said that it was possible, but he couldn't sense outside the seal. Plus he assumed B would have told him, and Fu. What else could have been? Alright, this will be a Tajutsu fight, and it's over when I say. Ready to begin. Yujito charged forward towards Fu, and went for a roundhouse kick. Fu bent backwards to dodge. Yujito saw this, and went for a swipe kick, but Fu jumped in the air above the blonde, and corrected herself. Fu went for an axe kick, this time Yujito blocked it, and grabbed her leg, and swung her towards the ground. Fu used her hand to catch herself, and threw a kick towards Yujito's chest, causing the blonde to release the mint girl. They both stood still, and charged each other, exchanging blows. Fu mostly dodged and kicked, as Yujito blocked and threw punches. Who do you think will win? Amoy asked. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Fu, Yujito is getting frustrated, and it will soon cause her to waver, since her desire to win is greater. Fu is more focused and patient. She prepares for anything. Yujito is stronger, but she has been annoyed by Fu for a while, and I think it'll cause problems. What's Yujito's problem? I wish I could tell you, but that's her secret. Anybody who speaks will get hurt by Samui, not that it's a big deal. Carrie, and I don't care, but she doesn't trust no one. Amoy said. Match over. Naruto and Amoy turned to see Yujito on the ground, Fu let out a breath and smiled. She lent a hand to Yujito. Need help. Good fight. Whatever. Yujito said, smacking her hand away. Naruto had it and walked up to Yujito, grabbing her by the collar. What is your deal? Why are you so stubborn? At first, I didn't care, but Fu sees something in you, and frankly I think you should drop the attitude. Yujito narrowed her eyes. Why should I listen to you? If you want to know, I'll tell you. I don't trust you, you, and Fu having fun with your friends being normal. You have no idea what it feels like. To be different, to be alone, and to be glared at. Treated differently for something you can't control. Yujito's glare softened when Naruto started to shake. You think I don't know? He threw Yujito on the ground, and when she looked up, Naruto was crying. I know alright, in Konoha. Every year I have been attacked on my birthday since I remember. I got kicked out of stores, I never knew my parents, parents told kids to ignore me, I was kicked out of the orphanage after I turned 5 and lived on the streets. I was alone. I was called a monster and people hated me, so don't talk like you know me. Naruto said before taking off. Fu was about to explode until she heard the other students calling Yujito a monster and a freak. Yujito was crying, but not because of the insults. It's because Naruto understood and he was dealt with worse than her. She assumed because his father was treated better, but by his eyes, she could tell he wasn't lying. Why? Yujito looked up at Fu, who was looking at her with a saddened look. Why does everyone here look at you like a freak? Fu asked. You heard Naruto come, so I want to know. Yujito didn't answer. She didn't know what to do. She has the Nibi seal in her. It's in her gut. One of Naruto fangirls yelled in rage. Yujito's eyes widened and looked at Fu, who didn't say anything. Fusan, you should stay away from her. Fu did something that surprised everyone and hugged Yujito. Before Yujito could say anything, Fu pulled back and smiled. I guess I should reintroduce myself. My name is Fu Fu stood and stretched out her hand. Jinchuriki of Nanabi, nice to meet you. Fu said, shocking everyone. Samui for the first time, mouth dropped. Yujito's eyes widened with tears coming out. W what? You mean we're the same? Fu channeled chakra to her stomach and a seal appeared. Yujito saw this, stood up, and hugged the girl. Matatabi, did you know? Yujito asked her tenant. No, because of the seal, I couldn't sense it. But you now have a true friend. Chimei is really nice, she's a lot of fun. Matatabi replied. Yujito nodded and pulled back from Fu. I'm sorry, I just didn't want you to be hated because of me. It wouldn't have been fair. Fu shook her head. No, I should have known by how you were treated that you were a. So should have Naruto come. Yujito tilted her head in confusion until it struck her. You mean? Fu smiled and nodded his head. That's right, Naruto is one too. He has you know what, I'll let him tell you. Samui approached the two. Wow Yujito, I guess you're not alone. Pretty cool to have people who can understand you. Yujito looked at her best friend and nodded. Fu turned to the class and frowned. You heard that, I'm one too, and so is Naruto-kun. So go ahead and hate me if you want. I don't care. But think about this, have we ever hurt you? Have we ever attacked you? No, you're the monsters. Always making us feel different, it's not fair. We just want friends and to have fun, but you all just treat us like freaks. Back in my village, I had no friends, no one would feed me when I was hungry, and my parents died when I was three. Still ask yourself, since I've been here. Have I ever attacked any of you, haven't I always been nice? And Naruto-kun, are you girls going to hate him too? He treated everyone fairly and defended me, does that make him a monster? Fu asked everyone. No one said anything. 
I'm still your friend. Everyone turned to Carrie. I think it's kinda cool. There's no way someone, as adorable as you, can be a monster foo. Naruto's my buddy, a funny guy. There's no way some like Naruto is a monster. Yujito, if you need a friend, you have one in me anytime. Amoy said, tossing her a lollipop. I'm sorry, I'll be your friend. And me. Me too. I will. Many of the class said. Yujito couldn't believe this. The class was apologizing to her and wanted to be her friend. Sure, I don't mind. Yujito said, trying to act tough. Fu gave Yujito a victory hug. Can I be your friend Fu? Samui asked. Fu stared at the girl, then pulled her into the hug. Sure. I'll be your friend Samui-sama. Me too, Samui-chan. Please be my friend. A lot of the boys volunteered. Fuck off. Samui said in a cold tone. All the guys backed off. My only friends are Yujito, Fu, Amoy, Kari, and Naruto-kun. The four mentioned looked at Samui, who was blushing when she said Naruto's name. She turned to them and glared. What? Nothing. Does she like Naruto-kun? They thought. Fu took Yujito's hand and ran towards the academy exit. Fu, where are we going? To find Naruto-kun, he doesn't know you're a sorry Samui-chan, Kari-chan. This is something we have to handle. Fu said, dragging Yujito. It's cool, good luck. Samui responded. Kari nodded and turned to Samui with a smirk. Naruto-kun? Kari asked. Shut it, he's mine. Samui responded. We'll see. Kari said with a blush. Amoy chuckled. Samui, Kari, and Fu Naruto, you are lucky. Naruto was on top of a mountain, looking over the village. He felt guilty about snapping at Yujito and leaving. He needed to calm down. Yujito had her own problems and she was alone, he should have seen the mask she was wearing. I need to apologize, knowing the class. They're probably giving her a hard time. Even at a time like this, you still worry about others. How are you feeling, Kit? Karuma asked. Pretty shitty, she was already having a hard time, and now, I think I made it worse. Naruto answered. Things will get better, I have a sense for these things. Karuma responded, trying to cheer up his host. Naruto nodded. Naruto-kun. Naruto turned around and saw Fu and Yujito. Hey Fu-chan, Yujito listen I'm sorry for yelling at you. You already had it rough and I probably made it harder for you. Naruto said, surprising Nibi. No, I was an ass. I thought keeping you away from me would help you make friends and maybe not feel what I felt. Yujito said, as she and Fu sat on different sides of Naruto. I learned that you are like me. Naruto's eyes widened and turned to Fu. Why did you tell her to wait? Like you? Yujito nodded. That's right. I'm waiting. Fu said, cutting them off. How about we just go and meet them Fu said, putting her hand forward. Naruto nodded and put his hand on top of Fu's. The two turned to Yujito and nodded. Yujito followed suit and put her hand on top of Naruto's and blushed. It feels warm. She thought until she was in a white domain. Where are Kuruma-kun? I can't believe you here. If I knew the blonde stud was your host, I would have told her to ride him ages ago. Matatabi said, pressing her against her cage. Mata-chan. You were here my love. Sorry I couldn't sense you. These seals were preventing it. Kuruma said, clawing his cage. What's going on? Naruto asked. Well you see, Kuruma and Matatabi are mates per se, and it's been a long time since they saw each other. Jimei said. I thought they were all brothers and sisters. Fu said. No, we have no blood so we can't really be related. Even if we were, we're demons. Human rules don't apply to us. Jimei said, then turned to Yujito. It's nice to meet you Yujito-san, you gave Fu a hard time, but now I know why. You shouldn't worry about what others think. Please for now on, open up. Don't isolate yourself, you're a strong girl with a bright future, but don't spend it alone. Yujito nodded and smiled. It's nice to meet you. You're right I'm sorry. Fu has been kind to me, and I promise I'm going to be best friends with Fu and hopefully Naruto. You better. The group turned to Kuruma. The kid was worried about you, even though he wouldn't openly admit it. He wanted to help you, but he got his stubbornness from his mother. Kuruma, is there a way to make Yujito happy? Or Kuruma, Yujito still looks upset, maybe I should play a prank to make her smile. You were acting cold, and that's coming from a being of hatred. Yujito blushed and turned to Naruto, who was also blushing. You were worried about me? Damn, Baka Fox. Why do you have to tell her that? Naruto asked, face red. Yujito giggled and approached. Nice to meet you Kayubi-sama. Kuruma nodded, it's good to see you smile, it suits you more. Kuruma commented. Yujito blushed at the praise. Naruto and Fu walked to Matatabi. Wow, you look amazing. Naruto commented. And so cute. Fu added. Ah, you're a pretty little thing yourself Fu-chan. And you Mr. Handsome, sorry about what Yujito said. I'll make sure she repays you with some night service when she's older. 
Naruto was confused while Yujito was blushing in embarrassment. Aha, same old Matatabi. Miss you kitty. Same to you Foxy. Both said to each other. I think we should go. Naruto said. Fu and Yujito nodded in agreement, then the trio disappeared. Kuruma and Matatabi were still crying for each other. Naruto, Fu and Yujito were back on the mountain standing each other. That was fun. Yeah listen, I'm sorry how I acted. To tell you the truth, I would love to be friends. Yujito said, rubbing her arms. Me too. Fu cheered. How this, we be a team and become the strongest in Kumo. Naruto said. I can get behind that. Yujito said. Me too. We'll be unbeatable. Fu said. Right, we even surpass Octopops. Naruto said. Yujito was confused. Octopops. Yay, he's talking about B-san. Fu said. Wait, you know B-san? Yujito asked. Fu and Naruto nodded. Did he know you were Jinchurikis? The two nodded their heads again. Yujito was seething in anger. Naruto caught it and he started to get angry. And he didn't mention you to us. Fu realized what Naruto meant and she was even angry. All this could have been avoided. Fu said. Naruto started to giggle evilly. I think we should punish the rapper. Fu and Yujito looked at the male and started to giggle along with him. Huh? Karabi was hanging upside down from a woman's hot spring. He looked down and smirked. Out of sight. The lady looked up and screamed. Pervert. And Karabi B got the beat of a lifetime on his back with a note that said payback is a bitch. Four years later. Karabi was standing in the middle of training ground one, surrounded by Fu, Yujito, and Naaruto-e 14 years old. Alright, let's get this show on the road. One tail cloak mode, go. Be instructed, as a chakra cloak surrounded him. Hi. The three younger responded before their bodies were covered with a red chakra cloak. Naruto and Yujito crouched on the ground and Fu leapt onto a cliff. Remember, use techniques only unique to your partner. Be instructed. Three nodded and no one moved. Fu jumped towards B and delivered a kick which created a crater under B's foot. Taking advantage of the situation, Naruto and Yujito charged in at B like animals. Once they got close, Yujito turned and ran to the side. Naruto dragged his hand through the ground like a claw and swiped at the older nin as Fu jumped away. B threw a punch at Naruto and created a shockwave when their attacks met, creating a dust cloud. When the dust cleared, Karabi and Naruto were in a wrestling match. Yujito came from behind B and charged him. Seeing the attack coming, B tossed Naruto behind and towards Yujito. Yujito grabbed Naruto's arm and tossed back towards B and followed in pursuit. They began to repeatedly swipe attacks towards B. B smiled as he continued to block. Your teamwork is astounding. B said as he grabbed both their wrists and tossed them aside. Soon a chakra claw came from above and tried to grab B. The Hachibi host started to jump away and saw Fu using wings to fly and was controlling the claw from above. Soon two more came from the blonde, making it almost twice as hard. B, using his superior speed, was able to maneuver around all the cloaked claws. Alright, time for chakra cloak version 2. Show me what you three can do. Stop with the annoying rapping. The two females said. Naruto, Yujito, and Fu appeared in front of their tutor, and a red chakra cloak surrounded them as their skin began to peel. Naruto and Fu went from one tail to four, while Yujito grew an extra one. Soon their whole bodies turned to the chakra form of their. Now, your partners. Perform them. The three nodded. Kitsune Crimson Flare Bomb. Naruto charged a compressed ball with some fire and red chakra. The Butamushi Scale Shower. Fu created a wind mixed with beetle scales. Nico Scorching Mouse Missile. Yujito started inhaling air. The three fired their attack towards B. B went five tails and was surrounded by bones. Charging Bull Ants. B used the Bull Skull and collided with the attack, creating an explosion and a powerful shockwave to match. All four of them flew backwards. Fu landed and was hanging from a tree branch. Naruto landed on the ground, face first, and Yujito landed on top of him. All four of them deactivated their chakra mode. Yujito-chan, are you okay? Naruto asked as Yujito was sitting on top of him. Yeah, thanks Naruto-kun. Yujito said. You should grind on top of him, your butt is on his back. He might not notice. Matatabi said. Yujito contemplated this and looked down at her new favorite blonde. She slowly started to move back and forth. Naruto's eyes widened. Is she feeling soft? No stop it, you're not a pervert. There's nothing wrong with being a pervert as long as it's towards the woman you're interested in. The five girls around you are all attractive. Kuruma said. Five? You don't think I know about Mabui-chan. Some of the finest legs I have ever seen. Naruto blushed up a storm and Yujito wasn't helping. What are you doing? Fu said approaching them. Both blonde blush and separately from each other. Now it's time to go see bro, so let's go. The three nodded and left with their sensei toward the rakage tower. 
As they were walking, a lot of girls were eyeing Naruto with hearts in their eyes. Fu pouted, while Yujito glared. At the same time, some boys were eyeing Fu and Yujito as well, causing Naruto to clench his fist. Killer B chuckled. The past four years were very eventful for the group of six friends. Naruto was the rookie of the year. Ever since he was able to open up Yujito, she has been a little more friendly to her class, but she had a special place for Samui and Fu, but a higher place for Naruto. Fu developed feelings for the blonde as well, and wasn't afraid to show her affection. Naruto and Amoi were like brothers, Naruto being the oldest since Amoi was always paranoid. Kerui and Naruto's friendship was calm. Kerui being a tomboy made it easier out of all the girls to hang out with since she didn't care for shopping and gossip. Samui was closer to Naruto out of all the nonjinchuriki. She was always striving to beat him, but unknown to him, she was attracted to him because she liked strong men, and Naruto was able to get Yujito to open up, who got along with everyone. She called Kerui Nisan, and Kerui accepted. When Amoi panics, Fu always finds it hilarious and tries to cheer him up. Yujito and Fu got along pretty well, and since the Matatabi host opened up, Fu had a tougher time beating her in their spars. Samui and Fu weren't really close since Samui's cool nature clashed with Fu's cheerful one, although when they spar, it was entertaining for the both of them. Fu developed feelings for Naruto as she got older and she developed a bit of a B-cup. Yujito changed since she opened up. It took her a while to talk to the rest of the class since she still held a grudge against them. Naruto and Fu became her new best friends alongside Samui. Amoi and her got along well when he wasn't complaining. However Kerui always annoyed her when she tried to beat her in sparring. Just like Fu, she had developed feelings for Naruto since he and Fu helped open her up a bit. She had a C cup. They made it to the Rekage office and saw Samui, Amoi and Kerui. Naruto, Fu, Yujito. Stand next to Samui. The three named Nod and next to the Platinum Blonde. Now, you six are the best in the academy. Instead of waiting the next four months to graduate. We decided to make Top Shinobi after yours truly. You know how Kanoha has the and the Mist have their swordsmen. Well six are going to represent us. B and Mabui are going to train the three. You'll be known as Team Ragnarok 1 status is up, but for now, you'll be Team B. Samui, you alongside Amoy and Kerry will be known as Team Aegis, that is right. You'll be trained by Derry and I, but just like Naruto's team, you'll wait until your status rises. You'll be Team Derry. Naruto looked at Mabui and blushed. Mabui noticed this and smirked. She was happy she finally made status and now she was going to be Naruto sensei. Naruto became closer with Mabui when he started to learn. Mabui had a thing for smart guys and Naruto becoming Kumo's first seal master would definitely drive. I walked forward and handed the six chakra paper. Now this is chakra paper, this will let you know what your affinity is. I'm not going to explain. Just pour chakra into it. Amoy went first and poured chakra into his and one side crumbled and the other got wrinkled. He had earth and lightning. Kerui went next, one side got wrinkled and the other burned. She had lightning and fire. Samui went third and the whole paper was wrinkled and soaked. Derry cocked an eyebrow. We seem to have another storm release user. Derry said. That's unexpected. But great nonetheless. A commented. Samui nodded and stepped back. Fu went next and poured her chakra in, the paper turned into crystals, surprising the adults. Crystal release. But how? Mabui asked. That's cool, I'm going to be strong. Fu cheered. Everyone chuckled at the girl. Yujito went next. Her paper dried up. Scorching release. What's going on? Three Mabui said. Naruto went last. When he poured chakra into his, it split. One side got wet and the other twisted, confusing the new genin. What does this mean? Naruto asked. It would seem you have a thunder release. I have the same ability. Mabui said, surprised by the blonde. Naruto smiled. Well, I'll be counting on you Mabui-chan. Naruto responded. Mabui blushed and smiled deviously. She had a perfect reason to spend time with Naruto and she wasn't going to waste it. Sure, count on me. Mabui replied calmly. Samui, I'll help you with your bloodline as well. Derry offered. Cool, I appreciate it. Samui responded. Naruto and Samui, I would like to teach you my lightning armor. Kerry and Amoy, once you increase your chakra level, I'll teach you the same. As said. The Jenna nodded. Now, go enjoy yourself because next week, your team will be formed. Speaking of, I also want each of you to have a partner. There will be a time when you will be on a two-man mission. So to get it fair, I want to form a non-jinchuriki. Learn each other's moves, form collaborations, and watch each other back. So who would be on whose team? If it's cool, I'll be on Naruto's team. We are equal in terms of skills, and I trust him to watch my back. Is that okay with you Yujito? Samui asked her friend. 
That's fine, the other two might hold him back, especially Carrie. Yujito said. What did you say? I'm as strong as you. Carrie responded. You wish. Yujito said before looking at Amoy. So Amoy, how about we partner up? Sure, I'll try to keep up. Amoy answered. Who smiled and hugged Carrie. That means we're partners, Carrie me. Very expression softened. Yeah, we're become the best team. Now remember, you're done with the academy. So please take this seriously, especially you, Carrie. Your grades could be better. I said. Carrie mumbled to herself about hating studying. Naruto will be our master, sweet, I'll be the best. Dadabeo. Samui will be our demolitionist, cool. Ujido will be our assassin and stealth fighter. I can get behind that. Fu, you will be our trapper and mistress. Hi. Amoy will be our strategist. Sure thing, Reikijama. And Carrie will be our master. Carrie smirked and nodded. Now, all of you will specialize in the field I choose, but you all will learn ninjutsu and tojutsu of your own style. We'll be at the top. Do you agree? Hi. The new genin responded. Great, now get out of my office and go enjoy yourself. Reikij ordered with a smile. The genin nodded and left. I turned to Mabui. You can spend time with Naruto. Mabui blushed and left without a word. B smirked at his brother. With what the ladies have planned, we'll end up reviving his clan. The grunted at B raping, but agreed. The revival of the Uzumaki and Namaka's clan in our village, along with four. We will remain on top forever. The new genin and Mabui were bull BBQ, enjoying themselves after their announcement. Mabui and Samui were sitting next to our favorite male blonde since they won in rock paper scissors against the other girls. Usually the group would have been chatting it up, but they were staring at mountain of BULGOGI marinated beef. NJUMULLEOK short marinated steak. Being devoured by Naruto and surprisingly Samui and Mabui. The two girls were eating more than Yujito and Fu, even though they were. I understand Naruto kun, should I even expect Amoy or Yujito, but how the hell does Samui and Mabui eat as much as him? Samui paused and narrowed her eyes at Carrie. Are you calling me fat? Mine, as well be, look at your plates. Carrie answered. I don't see what the big deal is. Naruto said, gaining everyone's attention. I like a girl who can eat and not worry about dieting. If most girls realize they just need to train, they can look as beautiful as you girls. Naruto said, eating some steak. All the girls blushed, but foo. She had a puzzling look on her face as she saw Samui and Mabui eat. Is that how your boobs get bigger? Because you eat more than us while training. Naruto blushed and choked, Mabui's face turned red and Samui tilted her head. Possibly, it would explain things. Samui answered and turned to see Naruto still blushing while beating his chest. Waiter. More bulgogi. Carrie called. Samui shook her head. Why are you trying to make them bigger, they're a pain on my shoulders. Samui asked and looked at Naruto, who had a nosebleed. Although, they have benefits. If they hurt so much, why won't you let Foxy come massage your shoulders? Yujito suggested. Why me? Naruto asked. Because you're good at it. Remember when we spar a few months ago? My body was sore, but the massage you gave was heavenly. Yujito answered. Really? Samui said before looking at her fellow blonde. I'd appreciate it if you would, Naruto-kun. Samui said with a tint of pink on her cheeks. Same here. Would you do this for us? Mabui asked. Naruto looked between the girls and chuckled nervously. Sure anything for you girls. Oh I know, let's go to the onsen. We can bathe together. Fu suggested. I don't mind. I believe they have a mixed bath. It'll be perfect for the massage. Samui agreed. You guys can go, I think I'll go home and sleep. Amoy said. Naruto laughed at his friend's laziness. That's fine, but we should get out of here. Naruto said. We'll put this on the Asama tab. Mabui said. But an onsen would feel nice. Naruto-kun, you will join us right? I don't think it would be a good idea, I wouldn't be disturbed. I don't mind. It'll be fun. You're more than welcome to join. Just don't stare. All the girls said. Naruto blinks and sighs. Fine, if it would make you happy. Naruto said. The girls cheered. The group separated from Amoy and headed to the onsen. As the group was walking, they gained a lot of attention. Look, it's Naruto-sama. Naruto-kun, you can have my kids. Marry me, Naruto-sama. A group of Naruto fangirls yelled, causing Naruto to groan. Samui-chan. Step on me. Go out with me. Look, her chest got bigger. Samui eyes twitch a bit. yujito sama Come here Kitty-chan. Yujito is so hot. yujito seed. It's Mabui-san. Wow, sexy, as ever. I wish I was married to her. Mabui sighs and shakes her head negatively. It's Fu-chan. Fu is so cute. Just looking at her makes you smile. A group of boys and girls said. Hi everyone. Hi Fu. Everyone responded as Fu waved at them. 
I swear they're so annoying. Naruto said. I wish I could kill them. Samui said. Yujito and Mabui agreed. Let's just go girls. Naruto said. The girls nodded and proceeded to the onsen. An hour later. Ah Naruto-kun. This feels so good. Damn I can't hold back my voice. A little lower Foxy-kun. Suo cool. Hmm. The girls moaned as they were getting the best massage of their life. Naruto looked at them confusingly. Is it really that good? He asked and he and his clones were massaging the girls. The real one was massaging. They didn't answer, they couldn't control their breathing. Kit, you have some magical hands. To take their breath away with just a massage is impressive. When you and the girls hawkoitis, remember, it's not just about peen. Buruma. Pervert fox. I'm not ready for that. Naruto said with a blush. Please, you're attracted to all of them. Speaking of, next week you're going to spend some time with Mabui, quite the cat she is, but she also loves smart men. You are ahead in your class, but you could do better. Kuruma said. Naruto looked down at Mabui. What should I do? Naruto asked. He wanted to impress Mabui, he liked the other girls, but his crush on Mabui was huge. Maybe he was a pervert. Easy, you're an Uzumaki. Go to your homeland after your training, but ask the rakage when Mabui is in the room. I guarantee she will jump at the chance, but don't just say yes, act like you're not sure, mention how personal it will be Naruto listened to Kuruma's plan, and smiled. It's been a week since the announcement. Mabui and Naruto were on a private training field at a high point of a mountain. Alright Naruto, when I'm teaching you. I want to be known as Mabui Senpai. Um, why not Sensei? Because I'm not that much older than you, and you're the only one who can call me that. Now to explain how Thunder Release works. Mabui held up her hand and covered lightning. Naruto-kun, as you have probably seen. Kumo uses lightning to enhance our physical attacks or use in close range. Do you have any idea why? Because lightning can't be controlled. Naruto answered. Right, lightning range attacks are destructive and hard to control. But the speed makes up for it. Mabui threw a kunai at the center of a rock wall. Watch, lightning style. Lightning needle. Mabui shot five lightning needles from her hand and two hit the kunai. Well the others landed around it, creating small holes, creating cracks around it. Now watch this, Thunder Sendence. This attack was yellow and bigger, plus there was less static. All hit the middle and went through the canyon. Now Naruto, what have you noticed? Thunder looks more like energy than lightning and is controlled. Thunder is lightning surrounded by wind, compressing it and concentrating its power. It increases its piercing damage and it focuses on one target. Mabui explained. Cool. Naruto cheered with stars in his eyes. Well with me, you learn and create your own techniques. You learn seals on the side so be prepared. About that, how many seals do you have here? Nordo asked. Well, not many. We were only able to seal both B and Yujido because of a seal passed down from the Senju clan, and sadly it's the most powerful we have. Most wouldn't even bother to learn it, Kumo only loves to solve problems with their fist. That's why you being here is a blessing in disguise. Mabui said. Naruto nodded. This would motivate him to try harder in becoming Kumo's first seal master. Breakage was barely awake at the moment in his office. Training both Kari and Amoy while working, as Rakage was tiring. B gave him updates on Fu and Yujito's training, both still trying to learn theirs, but Samui and Naruto progressed further, since they had a teacher who could teach them. Age I san A snapped out of his thought when Naruto and Samui walked in with Derry and Mabui. What do you want, brat? Have you been flirting with my daughter? A grumble, secretly teasing the blonde. W what Naruto replied, as both he and Mabui blushed. No, I just wanted to let you know I went over every scroll you have and was wondering what to do. The eyes widened. There's no way. Actually, it's true too San. Naruto-kun learned it with ease pretty fast. He's natural at it, he went through all our scrolls and created a few seals on his own. Mabui explained. Um, well I'm not sure what to do about this. We were never well educated and I'm not sure where we could acquire any more. I responded. Naruto, now Naruto mentally nodded. Actually, I might have an idea. Naruto spoke up. Really, what is it? I asked the male blonde. Well, from what Kuruma told me. I'm from the Uzumaki clan. Maybe there's some scrolls locked away at my clan's homeland. If I go there, I can uncover something. Naruto suggested, slightly looking at Mabui. That's actually not a bad idea. Your clan was always protective of their possessions, and it wouldn't be too far-fetched if they have some of their valuables hidden away. I agree, Naruto. I'll send you and a few others to Yuzu. Actually, I have a few suggestions. Samui have a high affinity to water, and she might be helpful. Naruto said, causing Samui to blush with a small smile. I also think Fu should come along since she can fly. Those are good choices, but you should bring them with you as well. A suggestion. 
Naruto smirked, he knew Mabui wanted to tag along since she was a nerd. Exploring unexplored history and learning more about seals would excite her more than Naruto eating ramen. Well, Dairy sensei has an affinity to water and B-sensei can swim in his tail beast form. Um the group looked at Mabui, who was shifting nervously. I would love to tag along if it's okay with you Naruto-kun. Huh, no offense, but I'm not sure how beneficial you'll be on this mission, granted you are very strong and the smartest person in the room. Naruto compliments, making Mabui blush. But this is a rare opportunity to explore your homeland will bring me joy. I don't want to pass this up and it would mean a lot if you allow me to go. Mabui begged. Naruto folded his arms. Hmm, I'm not sure Manui covered her eyes with her bangs and approached the male blonde. She grabbed him by the collar and dragged him outside into the hallway, closing the door behind them. Once they were alone, she pushed Naruto against the wall, causing the blonde to look nervous. Mabui what HMPH. Naruto's lips were sealed by Mabui as she shoved her tongue into Naruto's mouth, causing his mind to turn into mush. I wasn't expecting this, everything turned blurry. Tastes like cinnamon. Though kit. You'll make a good alpha. Mabui was kissing him for about 30 seconds before she released him. She gave the blonde a proud smirk as she analyzed his expression. May I please go to Naruto-kun? Mabui whispered the last part. Sure haha, you can come. Naruto said with a goofy smile. Mabui giggled and grabbed Naruto's hand as they walked back into the office. I wanted to question what happened, but seeing Naruto a face, he had a pretty good idea. Well, when my daughter wants some, she tends to get it. Samui looked at the two before puffing out her cheeks. You win this round. Mabui sensei can come along, age age. Naruto said as his cheeks heated up. I chuckled a bit. Really, how did she convince you? The rakage asked. I'm not important. Can we just go? Naruto asked. Yeah, yeah. This will be an air rank mission. Be careful of traps. I'll send Fu to the gate, you leave tomorrow, and Naruto is in charge. Be mindful that there might be certain areas on why Naruto can enter. Follow his command, understand. Hi. The three responded. The three left the room, and, as soon as the door closed, I started laughing. I swear the girls are going to have that boy whipped. Derry smiled as he shook his head. It wouldn't be so dull to see what happens. Derry responded. It's been four days since the group left for Yuzu. Naruto and his group were on their way to his homeland, and he was excited but nervous, his home might not find anything but destroyed ruins. You seem happy, Naruto-kun, but at the same time afraid. I honestly don't know what to expect. I never had a family, and to find something about my heritage is kind of making me nervous. Naruto explained. Samui grabbed his hand and squeezed it slightly, causing him to blush. We're here for you. So don't worry. Samui said with a rare warm smile that caused the blonde's heart to skip a beat. You have a beautiful smile. Naruto mumbled unconsciously. Samui's eyes widened and her cheeks got darker. Naruto's eyes widened when he realized what he said and both blondes turned their heads from each other. Mabui and Fu had a pouty look on their faces after the reaction. You win this time. Mabui commented. After a few more hours of traveling, they made it to the destroyed village. Naruto gazed at the ruined village. This is my clan's home. Naruto said the group started to walk through the village to see if anything was intact. Naruto wasn't sure how to feel looking at his clan's village. When they made it to the center of the village, there was a statue with glowing eyes. Naruto walked up to the statue and touched it. Unknown to him, Chakra poured from his palms to the statue. Soon the statue began to glow, and soon a redhead woman came to life. Hi Sachi, the woman said. Sachi. Then you are Naruto said, trembling. Yes, and no, you see this statue was meant to store memories and knowledge in it. I poured some chakra into you when you were born so I could speak with you. This statue responds to Uzumaki chakra and absorbs the chakra I poured into you, and it allows me to speak to you. Kashina said. Naruto hugged the woman and began to cry. I always wanted to meet you Kachan. Kashina hugged him in return, smiling. Now even though I'm happy to see you. The statue was meant to answer questions. I'm part of the statue so ask anything. Is there anything still here like stuff I can learn from my ancestors? You mean like scrolls? Yes there's a hidden library under the village, but only some of our blood can get in. It's protected by a level 8 barrier seal. Kashina asked. What about weapons? Naruto asked. They were in the library as well when our village was attacked. We stored all our valuables in there, that way no matter how hard someone tried, they could never get in. Kashina asked. What happened to our village? Why were they attacked? Kashina looked at her and saw her headband. She saw Naruto's life and wasn't sure how he would handle it, but she answered. They were destroyed by three villages. Kiri, Iwa and. The team's eyes widened when they heard this. You see, even though we were peaceful people, we were seen as a threat. 
Fuinjutsu is the most powerful art after Sage. Our clan not only were prodigies and masters of the art, we created more and more every time we learned. Add that to our water, wind mastery, and healing factor, you can see why. But before our clan perished, we took out 85% of each of the other village's armies. We were badasses. Naruto gave a small smile. I see. Kashina sighs. She tried to make a joke, she didn't blame the current generation for what happened, and hopefully Naruto didn't either. Naruto, it was the first Rakage who issued it, remember that. War happens. Do you understand? Naruto looked at his mom and realized what she was saying. Yeah, I understand. Naruto responded. Kashina nodded and snapped her fingers, then a stairway appeared under Kashina. This will lead you to the library. You're the only one who can enter. I'll talk with the girls, I would love to get to know my future daughter-in-laws. Mabui, Fu, and Samui blushed. Why yeah, I'm out. Naruto said before going down the stairs. Okay, first question. How many kids are you willing to give me? Kashina asked. Fu and Mabui blushed up a storm. Samui had a calculated look on her face. Is there a limit? Samui asked. Kashina smirked. I like you. Fu and Mabui panicked. They had to impress Naruto's mother. Well, I like to have five or six. I always wanted a big family. Fu said. I for one would love three. Mabui said. Samui didn't answer, as she was still thinking, she then looked at Kashina with an emotionless look. I think nine will be cool. Kashina's eyes shined, while Mabui's jaw dropped. Well, are you prepared to share with him? Kashina asked, surprising the girls. As you know, he's the last of our clan, and it would be a shame if he were to die, but with you three and the other two girls, you would be considered heroes, since can guarantee our clan survival, plus I doubt any one of you can claim his heart, since my Sachi is attracted to all of you, and he wouldn't want to hurt any of you. I wouldn't mind. Fu said. We'll be like sisters. I guess I'll be okay with it. Especially since it was Kumo who destroyed the village. Mabui said. I'm cool, but I'll be the head wife. Samui said. Boo. Mabui asked, narrowing her eyes. Tell me, deal with it. Samui glaring back at Mabui. Kashina chuckled a bit. You girls, please take care of my Sachi. He needs it. Kashina said gaining the girl's attention. Of course, the girls replied. Soon Naruto walked up with five clones carrying a big scroll on their backs. I'm back, how was your face red? Naruto asked the three girls. Oh, we were talking to your mom about we were having a girl talk. Mabui said, cutting Samui off. Anyone, did you find anything? Yeah, they even have summon scrolls for houses. I'm going to use it for my new home. I also got some ninjutsu and weapon scrolls. I'm going to be busy for a while. Thank Kami for shadow clones. I see you learned that. Anyway, in Sachi I don't have much time. Remember, no matter what you choose, I'm proud of you. Rather if it's Kumo or Konoha, always protect what's precious to you. I love you, Naruto. Kishina said, hugging her son. I love you too, Kachan. Naruto said, returning the hug. Kashina walked back to the center of the ruined village and turned back into a faceless statue. Naruto just wiped his tears and had a warm smile on his face. Let's go home. Can you girls grab some of the scrolls? The girls nodded and the three proceeded to leave Yuzu and head back to Kumo. Naruto turned his head back to his clan home. Bye Kachan. I'll make you proud. So that's what happened, I said to Naruto's group. Naruto and Mabui had informed them on his trip. I was happy Naruto met his mother, but was wondering what would Naruto do now that he found out that played a part in his clan's destruction to the front, then got on his knees and bowed to the blonde. I'm sorry that the village destroyed your ancestors. I just want you to know that I played no part in that. I respected your village and their strength. The rakage before me wanted me to help, but I refused. Still, I want to apologize. If it helps, I'll grant you one request. It's okay Jai-san. I wasn't even there and no one here was involved. But, as for the request. May I have a large area of land, I got a house in one of the summon scrolls, and it's the size of a mansion. Naruto asked. Sure, that's an easy request, and thank you for forgiving our village for what they did. If you want I can enter you into the CRA since you're the last male of the clan, you would be able to have more than one wife. It's your choice. I said. He knew the boy had a few crushes on some of the girls, but he probably wouldn't accept it unless they did. I am Naruto stuttered with a blush on his face. The idea of marrying Samui, Mabui, Yujito, Kerry, and Fu gave him wild imagination. The girls in the room weren't faring well, but Fu. That's a good idea, we'll be a big happy family. Fu said, as she hugged the blonde. Samui was quiet, she wasn't sure about this, but all the girls involved were friends of hers, and she couldn't force Naruto to choose and hurt the others. He was of good nature, plus Kumo did destroy his clan. I'm cool with it. Samui said. W what Samui you're waiting for? You want to marry me? 
Naruto asked with a blush on his face. Is that a problem? Samui asked with a blush on her face. You're the first and only guy friend I have. You are pretty cool. Wait, but that means I like you. Samui said, finishing Naruto's sentence. Naruto's face felt hotter than the sun. She's not the only one. Naruto turned to Mabui. I have liked you for a while now. Honestly before meeting you, I was all about being a shinobi and surviving, and I have to admit, you brought some enjoyment into my life. I like you too. Fu said, jumping on the blonde's back. You're my first friend and the reason I'm here. You're my most precious person. And those three aren't the only ones. Naruto turned his head towards the source and saw B, Kari, and Yujita walk in. Yujita walked up to the blonde and gave him a passionate kiss on the lips. You're an amazing guy, you never gave up on me. Hey, who said you get to kiss him? Kari yelled. Yujito turned to her rival and smirked. Well if you want to kiss him, nothing is stopping you. Yujito said, causing Kari to freeze. She turned to Naruto, sputtering in embarrassment. Naruto chuckled and approached the girl and kissed her on the cheek. Let's start with this. Naruto said, making Kari blush and give a small nod. Hey, I didn't get to kiss Naruto-kun yet. Fu complained with a pout. Same, it's uncool to leave us out when the three of you get a kiss. Samui said. Naruto gave a nervous chuckle and approached the two. He was about to give Fu a kiss on the cheek, but Nanabi Jinchuriki turned her head and kissed Naruto on the lips. Naruto pulled back, face red, as in Uzumaki's head. We knew each other the longest, so no kissing on the cheek. Naruto just nodded and turned to Samui who was looking at him expectantly. He could read the look on her face. Don't even think about kissing me on the cheek. Naruto went in for her lips, but Samui was impatient and grabbed Naruto by the collar, pulling him towards her. She smashed her lips against his and added some tongue into it. Both blondes began to moan while in the makeout session. Every girl in the room blushed while all the guys gave Naruto a proud look, except Eri. Samui separated from Naruto and licked her lips. That was a cool first kiss. Are you done? I asked with an amusing smile. Everyone nodded. Now Naruto, I'll have someone escort you to your land so you can summon your house and set it up. With that said, starting next week, you'll continue your training. Now get out of my office. Summoning Naruto said, summoning his new home from the scroll. What appeared shocked all the genin and Mabui there. A mansion that was the size of a two-story appeared. Was my clan filthy rich or were they good builders? Naruto asked out loud before walking in with the girls behind him. Wow, this is huge. Fu said, looking around. The first floor had a kitchen, a training room, a dining room, a living room, and there is a spa room. Fu cheered as she ran towards the room with a group behind her. This is a spa room? This looks like a pool. Yujito commented. Look how big the training room is. Kari said. Amwai followed her. Naruto-kun, how about we go check out the library? Mabui asked, tugging Naruto's arm towards the library. Naruto couldn't help but smile being around people he loved. But there was still one person he wished was here. He behind. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.